Welcome to r slash pro revenge, where an angry father breaks both of a bully's legs with a wrench. Our next Reddit post is from David and Mac. This happened in 1995 on a small rural town in Chaco province, Argentina. In a small town like this one, everyone knows each other. My father was an electrician, the only one in town, so he was constantly meeting people and he was born and raised here, so he was very well known by everyone. He grew up with many of the police officers from back then, and they even had asados together, which are like Argentinian barbecues at least three times a month for years. My father was not a violent man. This story is the only time I saw him do something like this. Ray, the other man in this story, had a busy son and they were not from this town. They had moved here a year or so prior and they were from Buenos Aires. I don't really know the guy, only his kid, who was an absolute butthole to almost every kid on the block, and he constantly picked on me and my brother since we were the youngest kids in our neighborhood, therefore we couldn't defend ourselves. Our dog, Bucky, wasn't trained since we knew nothing about training, but he was loyal and playful with every kid. One thing for sure though, he was protective. One afternoon we were playing in the park and out came the bully kid who at first threw rocks at us, then got closer and started calling us names and since we were little we got scared. He was bigger than us. We tried to leave but he blocked our way and started hitting my brother. I tried to stop him but he did the same to me. Bucky heard us crying, came running, jumped up and bit the bully's arm. He bit hard, shook and released, and then stood between us and the bully, barking like mad until the kid ran away. We saw the kid run to his house, and a few seconds later, the bully's father came out with a sledgehammer. Bucky stood in front of us, his hairs raised and barking, but the man didn't stop. He got close, raised the sledgehammer, and brought it straight down on Bucky's head. He didn't hit the dog once, he hit him five times. God, uh, I don't want to read this next sentence. Oh god, I don't want to read that sentence either. Okay, just suffice to say, OP is describing the event in detail and you don't want to hear it, I don't want to read it, so just use your imagination or don't. My brother and I were frozen in place, scared to death, crying a lot. This douchebag dad said something that I don't remember and left. We were unable to move for a moment, such was our fear. Finally, I grabbed my brother and went home. Dad was fixing a fan when we got back, and when he saw us, he asked what happened. We told him and he just said, Right, okay, let's wash your faces and grab some ice cream. Yeah, that's what our dad did. He took us for ice cream. He did a pretty good job of masking his emotions and showed himself as being cheerful to us. That night, when my brother was asleep and I was playing in the kitchen, my dad grabbed a wrench, told my mom he had to fix something in the neighborhood, and left. He came back sometime later, told me to go to bed, and that was that. A decade later, we came to know what happened. He went to the guy's house, knocked on the door, and punched the dude so hard it rocked his head back. He told the guy that he would break one of his limbs for each of his kids that he made cry. Then, he proceeded to beat the guy with a wrench right in front of his family, and he broke both the guy's legs. My dad then left the guy's house, went home, asked me to go to bed, talked to mom, and went straight to the cops, turning himself in, and was actually delayed until the police went and checked with the other guy. My dad also showed our dead dog to the cops, and the cops found the sledgehammer at the bully's house with the blood still on it, so they let my father go. The cops also spoke with the bully's dad when his legs got better and suggested that he leave town since he's not welcome now and he never would be. To get this, you have to understand the mindset of small rural towns. We looked at outsiders with mistrust back then, and it took a while for people to get used to you if you were new in town. However, people like this guy's family who came and went weren't liked very much. Apparently because, like the kid, the father was also a butthole. I don't condone the actions of my father, nor am I justifying in any way the events that transpired afterwards, but as a father myself, I can totally understand the extent that a man can react when their kids are harmed. I loved my dad and I have mad respect for him. Rest in peace, dad. We'll miss you greatly. This dude is an Argentinian John Wick. John Wick? More like Juan Wick. Our next Reddit post is from Big Jer. Let's start this story by saying that this happened 12 years ago. I'm now happily married with three kids and regret absolutely nothing. 
I was with my ex-girlfriend for three years. I had noticed that she was being extremely controlling. I was expected to give every little detail of my day and tell her my schedule in advance, and if I deviated from that, she would be very upset. She chalked it up to just bad feelings she was having and shrugged it off as her paranoia for past relationships due to infidelity. I had never once cheated or strayed, and I never gave her a reason to act like this. It felt unbecoming of my fiancé to act in such a way. Now, this is where it gets juicy. After she had asked me for my schedule to make plans, because my schedule tends to be more hectic than hers, I noticed that she was texting someone. In my line of work, if I put in more than 40 hours of work, I have the ability to take time off at will as long as the work is completed at a later date. I was very good friends with her brother and I still am. Me and him laugh about this story to this day and he actively reminds her about it. My ex-girlfriend and her brother worked at the same facility, so I was able to talk to him and get information about her schedule. And interestingly, the schedule she told me she had did not match up with the schedule that she actually had. She had been taking Wednesdays off right around the time that she started getting extremely controlling of me. So the next time Wednesday rolled around, I put on my work gear and pretended to leave for work. I waited outside of our place, and after about an hour, I noticed a very specific red Mustang with a specific decal in the back window. It was her cousin by marriage. I had also done my due diligence and set up an old laptop so that its webcam covered most of the apartment. I set it up for remote access and I had it alert me when the webcam noticed movement. Sure enough, a notification came through, so I remote logged into the laptop. My girlfriend's cousin walks through the door and, without skipping a beat, she unbuttons his shirt and begins kissing him. I created a URL link for the live stream. And since she was preoccupied, we had a family group text and a friend group text. My girlfriend and her cousin were both in these group texts. But at this current time, they were currently indisposed and couldn't look at their phones. They didn't even wait. They could have gone to the bedroom, but no, they decided to get freaky deaky right there on the couch. I sent the link off to the friend group chat and the family group chat. Within minutes, I'm getting calls nonstop from friends and family alike. There was no turning back. She was getting blown up, but she was ignoring her phone. Not until the fourth or fifth call came through did they decide to take a break. For context, the state that I live in allows recording of your personal property regardless of occupancy. I was the only one on the lease. She wasn't allowed to be on the lease because of poor credit. The call she picked up was from her cousin's mother whom she was banging. She, <laughs> she answers the phone on speaker and I kid you not, the first words out of his mother's mouth were, STOP F***ING MY SON! They both became rigid and she began to stutter over her words, saying, What are you talking about? The mother then divulged that there was a live feed of them sent out by me to her family. My girlfriend grabbed every pillow off the couch and covered herself up. The cousin staggered off, trying to put on his pants and shoes just to trip himself up and bang his head on my coffee table. He left a divot on the coffee table. By this time, I'd made my way to the front of the apartment complex, and I was there to greet the adulterer as he came out of the front exit. He froze and began to cry, apologizing profusely. I'm not gonna lie, what happened afterwards wasn't my best moment, and I nearly got into legal trouble if it weren't for the fact that he was trespassing on private property. Let's just say that I had a cast for six weeks and he wasn't in any family photos for months. I went up to the apartment where my ex-girlfriend was now fully clothed and crying inconsolably. I asked, oh my gosh, I asked her if that was snot or cum on her face. <laughs> then I told her not to answer because it didn't matter anyways. I gave her one hour to grab all her stuff and get out. Her mother wouldn't let her move into her apartment because she was just filled with embarrassment. Same for her brothers, and the cousin's mother kicked her son out. Rumors spread around our town very quickly, and for lack of better words, she was untouchable. Then, to add credibility to his story, OP shares screenshots of his text conversations, pictures of his ex with the face blurred out, and pictures of his broken arm from apparently punching the guy. None of it is really interesting enough to read verbatim, but I thought that I'd add that detail. Also, while reading this story, I kept thinking of the line, I couldn't tell if she, <laughs> if she needed to blow her load or blow her nose. Our next Reddit post is from Deleted. I work for a large global IT company. 
and my team were part of a larger extended team and an even larger still divisional team. The manager of this division is called Raj. He's based in the States and is what many would call the poster boy definition of a corporate suck-up. According to him, he's in constant video chats with the CEO and has a lot of face-to-face -face interaction with him. He also appears on much of our division's promotional emails and photographic materials, so he's a company-wide recognized person. As for me, I'm a trench-working techie from Scotland. My direct manager is always happy with my performance, and I'm somewhat known in our extended team, but not so much in the divisional team. Before this event, although I was aware of Raj and his reputation, I had never worked with him directly. I got invited to a company-wide collaboration event in America. We got there, and there were some initial social events and meet and greets. Raj was there, and his general demeanor seemed appropriate based on his reputation. We went into the first day bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I was assigned to a group of 10 people to work on a problem with some coding. All was going well, until we came to do group presentations. For our group, a young woman named Natalie was speaking on our results. Everything seemed to go okay, but after the session was over, Raj asked to see Natalie out in the hall. From inside the room, we could hear Raj literally screaming at her. Many, many offensive slurs were used, and we could hear banging on the wall as well. Natalie returned to the room a sobbing mess, much to the shock of everyone. Raj returned as if nothing had happened. This pattern continued over the course of the week. Raj would single people out for these one-on-one -on -one performance critiques. He would go into detail about how the work was substandard and how they need to improve. All the while taking BS photos for corporate to make us all look like one big happy family. I spoke to someone from my team back home, and it does turn out that this has always been Raj's behavior. I don't know what the job culture is like for this kind of job in America, but in Scotland, we have dignity with work regulations. Criticizing someone's work performance is fine, but not when you're engaging in ritualistic humiliation of your employees. I knew exactly what I was going to do. For the next few days, I made sure that I was delivering more presentations than anyone else and really making an effort to attract attention. As I hoped, Raj asked me for a chat and pulled me into the hall. He didn't even wait for the door to be closed before starting in on his rant. Experiencing this firsthand was interesting. He claimed I had no idea what I was talking about, even though it had likely been about 20 years since he did any technical work himself. He was vile, shouting and spitting in my face. I also learned what those banging noises were. He would punch doors and slam his hands on the wall near me as if to try to intimidate me. I was prepared mentally though, and just smiled and nodded during the entire rant. He looked angry that I was reacting this way, and by the end of it, I thought that he was legitimately going to burst a blood vessel. When he finished, I asked him if he was done. He told me to get out of his sight, and that's when I did it. I gave him a Glasgow kiss. For those unfamiliar, a Glasgow kiss is a headbutt. And that is not the first headbutt I've delivered in my life, having been brought up near Glasgow. He collapsed to the floor in shock, holding his nose, which unfortunately didn't bleed, looking up at me. I leaned down, and in my most Glaswegian accent I could, I whispered to him, If you ever disrespect me or my colleagues again, I'll kick the utter f out of you next time, you c I went back into the room while he did not. Inevitably, I got the HR call. Raj was in the room as well, and I could see that he had two black eyes as a result of the headbutt. I was asked to explain myself, and I told the truth, mostly. I explained about his abusive behavior, but focused specifically on the hand slamming, and how it had been intimidating me. It hadn't really intimidated me, but I massively played up this aspect of the encounter. I described the headbutt as an instinctive reaction when he slammed the wall right next to my head with his hands. I wasn't sure what story he had told him, but I was sent away after this. I ultimately ended up with a disciplinary action on my record, but no further consequences. Other team members were interviewed over the next few days, and once the pattern of abuse was established, Raj was terminated from the company. The most satisfying part of this was the day after, when everyone on the course went out for dinner, Natalie insisted that he stand next to her for the division group photo, black eyes and all. I like to think that that photograph contributed to his downfall in some way. 
OP, I've never heard of a Glasgow kiss before, but man, if that's what a Glasgow kiss is, I'd hate to learn what a Glasgow fuck is. That was r slash pro revenge, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.